Welcome everybody. This is Lorette and this is the official start of The Learning Tube. We have a special guest with us today, Benjamin Borowski. He is an expert when it comes to Notion. Now, as you know, The Learning Tube, we're always asking you, what do you guys want to learn about? What do you want to know more about? And we heard a lot of people said they want to learn more about Notion. So we went on a hunt and we looked for a Notion expert. And one somebody in the community actually recommended Benjamin. They said they saw his videos on YouTube. And so they saw his videos on YouTube and they told us, hey, you should go check him out. So we went and we checked him out, went to his website and we brought him here. So Benjamin, your visibility on YouTube helped because <laughs> that's how we know about you. Excellent. So um, now I'm going to pass it over to Ben and he is going to show you some ins and outs of Notion. I also put inside of the chat box, um, if Daydream, if you could put that in again, but I put inside of the chat box, the link to sign up for Notion. Um, there is a free version and then you can upgrade. Am I right, Ben? Right. That's correct. Yeah, there's okay. some limitations on the free version and then uh, you have a certain number of blocks you can create and it's more like for personal use. Uh, and if you're looking to kind of expand into the team use stuff, then you start paying per, per person on the platform. Gotcha. All right, so there's the link to sign up. Make sure you sign up so you can kind of see what he's doing and follow along as well. So I'm gonna turn off my video and I'm gonna hand it over. All right, have fun. Awesome, so I'm gonna start by sharing my screen and we're gonna have a look at Notion. So I know a lot of you, uh, just, just to confirm real quick, everybody can see the agenda for today, the learning tube my Notion screen, I think we're good. Excellent, um, so yeah, so today we're gonna take a look at Notion and I've already prepared a page in Notion which has our agenda in it. So you can see here, this is a page that uh, I can share with the world. Uh, for example, I shared this with Lorette and Dadrian just to kind of give them an overview about what we were gonna cover today. And you can see it functions a lot like you would expect like a text editing platform to like such as Google, Google Docs. You know, I can write uh, headings and I can write content and stuff like that. And there are lots of different ways that we can use Notion that kind of extend beyond just a docs writing platform. So this is what we're gonna cover today. And as I mentioned, we can, you know, sidebar to different topics, happy to go a little long if wanted, and we can explore some of the like kind of inspiring things that you can build with Notion. But to start, we're gonna, go right into talking about the Notion interface here. So the Notion interface has a sidebar over here on the left, and you can see that it is organized into four primary groups here. I've got my favorites, which are all of the pages that I favorited throughout my Notion workspace. And that means I can bring the stuff that I'm working on right to this section here. So I favorited this agenda page here, and you can see over on the top here, if I add and remove it from my favorites, that brings it up to the top. And then there's also team spaces. And team spaces are kind of a way of organizing your work internally. So you can see here, I've got my personal company workspace. I've got an administrative workspace. I've even got a household workspace where I collaborate with my partner on Notion. So you can see here, we've got like, you know, a food HQ, garden, automobiles and stuff like that. So Notion's pretty cool in that it allows you to kind of mix and match like work stuff and personal stuff. So you can do like sort of the administrative work uh, as part of your job and stuff like that and kind of mix and match that type of content. So I've created a new team space here for the learning tube and we're gonna build a fully functioning project management uh, Wikipedia system with docs and all the kind of stuff that people have talked about today in the chat. So we're gonna start there. So the only page I've got in my team space so far is this agenda page. Uh, we've also got private and shared areas. So these are the things that, these are the my personal docs that I'm working on. And I've also got shared docs, which are docs that I've shared with either somebody externally or a guest that I've invited into my Notion area uh, to collaborate on. Um, so you can basically have, you can use Notion entirely for yourself or you can collaborate with other people or your coworkers or you know your contractors and things like that. Um, and we can get into looking at how that works if if people are interested but effectively uh, yeah like notion is break broken down into pages and like uh similar to a website you've got like you know uh folders so for example the learning tube team space here has this agenda in it um and we've also got up here this is where we search for docs so i can search throughout my space so for example if i was looking for that agenda i could type agenda and there it is right there and you can see where else uh, agenda has been mentioned and things like that 
Um, throughout the space, we have updates. So uh, updates are kind of like your inbox. That's where you get messages throughout the space. So when somebody mentions you in a page or in a, in a note, you kind of get this like email style inbox and I can go through and process these, um, these notifications. So you can get notifications triggered anywhere in the space on any document and I can visit that document or I, and, uh, and comment on that. So I can like, you know, I think I've dealt with this one so I can just archive this notification. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a collaborative workspace where we're building docs. So kind of similar to Google Drive. There's also databases. So it's kind of similar to Google Sheets. Um, it's not quite as fully featured as some of these major apps, but it does a little bit of everything in one workspace. Um, so, you know, the next step in our agenda here is navigating Notion. So I can jump around to these pages. Um, over here, we can see over on the right side, this is kind of like the context menu for this page in particular. So I can see any comments that were added to this page. So for example, if I wanted to make a comment, I can select the text here, navigating Notion and click the comment button. And I can say, hello world. And then somebody else could come into this page that was working with me and work on this with me and resolve these comments or comment uh, back at me. Uh, you can also see the updates on the page through here. So this is like everything I've done. So here you can see the history of all the changes that I've made to this page throughout. Uh, the context menu, in Notion, you're gonna see a lot of these little dot, dot, dot menus. That is usually like a bunch more actions that you can take on these pages. So you can see here, there's tons of different stuff here about customizing the page, locking the page, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's a, whenever you see the dot, dot, dot in Notion, that means there's probably a menu there and you can take a bunch more actions um, and so on and so forth. So in this menu, you can also see, I can style this page so I can kind of change the text uh, styling. I can make it go full width, I can make this small text, and I can also customize like turning off discussions and backlinks and changing the way that the comment styling works. So that is a basic kind of layout of uh, a Notion workspace. You'll see down at the bottom here, we've also got templates, uh, trash, and team spaces. So you can create new team spaces to organize your work. You can also use templates, which both Notion and Notion creators can provide in order to get to like functioning systems without having to build them yourself. Um, so let's start yeah. by... Yeah. I have a question with the team spaces. So if you Absolutely. have lot, like the marketing team, the HR team, so you would create the different teams in that team spaces? You, you can, so a lot of the ways that, and this is this is where Notion gets kind of complex, and I'm gonna get into that a little bit as we will build out an actual team space for the learning tube kind of thing. But okay. effectively, you can, you can either segment your content into team spaces and only give access to those people, but you can also build systems that everyone shares the same like say you were building a project management database with tasks and all that, mm -hmm. every everyone at your company could use that same database, but you can actually use what are called linked databases to filter out only the content relevant to your team. And that's kind of like an advantage in that everybody is using the same project management system instead of like segmenting their work into their different team spaces. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can organize information in Notion and we'll kind of see that as we get going here. Okay. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like for, for our company, like our entire company is in one team space and we actually have a departments database that has uh, individual dashboards for each of our departments. So we have like a client okay. services dashboard. So that's like just, there's a ton of different ways that you can organize information in Notion. Um, so gotcha. there's, it, you know, it's kind of depending on how your business works, how big you are, uh, how segmented and siloed your teams are. A lot of times we get, um, for my consulting customers, at least I get into these scenarios where like the contracts team will need a, uh, the documentation or the docs that they create to be private to only them. So they can't use like a shared documentation database. Um, so it's like when it, when it gets into the legal and, uh, and contracts and employee one-on-ones, you have to create kind of like segmented uh, and that can be a great place to use team spaces. Um, gotcha. Okay. Cool. Great question. Um, so let's talk about creating pages because that's the main part of Notion is is uh, pages. You can have uh, databases as well, but databases are effectively collections of pages. And everything in Notion is what's referred to as a block, including pages and databases. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new page in my learning tube uh, uh, team space here. So you can click uh, plus here at the side next to the team space. And I'm just going to start with a blank page. So it just created an untitled page. 
and I can say like maybe I wanted to say like uh, maybe these are the meeting notes for today's meeting notes for and I can actually use the at key command to mention agenda and that actually creates a link to that page and I, you can see when I hover over it that I could see a preview of what's in that page so maybe these are my meeting notes and this is a very basic example that we're going to go through so Everything in Notion starts from the slash command or the space command when we're getting into AI stuff. So I can just start writing. And I'm not the best typer, so I'll deal with some typos. But um, so I can just start writing and I and every time I hit enter, it's actually inserting a new block on the page. And you can see that it's a block by hovering over the block and you'll see this little six dot menu out to the side, which allows me to drag and drop things. So I can say drag and drop. And if I wanted to order this content, I can simply drag it above the other block and you'll see the blue line tells you where you're gonna drop something. So I can drop it there. Um, and so you can reorganize your content. It's it's what's called a block editor. And this is kind of different from your traditional like Word or Google Sheets editor, which are more referred to as a flow editor. Um, Notion can be a flow editor in that I can select through blocks, uh, but you'll see here that when I actually select blocks, it's now selecting the entire block itself and I can drag these around as a group. So it's a really nice way for kind of like visually laying out pages and then you can switch into editing mode to write. And how you do that is, when I hit enter, you can see that flashing cursor there. I can start typing. And all I have to do to switch to block editing mode is to hit escape. And now I've selected the block. So now I can move that block around. And there's lots of, there's hundreds and hundreds of keyboard shortcuts that we won't get into and uh, that uh, too deeply today because it's a lot to cover. But basically, we've got this thing called the slash command menu. And you'll see here, anytime I enter a new block on the page, it tells me to press space for AI, slash for commands. And so slash for commands is, is kind of the root of all page building in Notion. So I type slash and it brings up this menu and I can click to insert one of these. So I can insert a new page inside this page. I can add uh, to-do lists, headings, uh, simple tables, bulleted lists, numbered lists, et cetera, et cetera and call outs and then you'll see here that I can also use AI in this case. I can ask AI to write something for me, I can continue writing, I can summarize and so on and so forth. There's also blocks for media so I can upload an image, I can add web bookmarks. So let's say I wanted to add a web bookmark so I'd say slash and I'll type web and then hit enter and it says paste in the URL. So maybe I want to grab this uh, click funnels link from learning funnels and I paste this in and I'm going to click create bookmark. And so and then, that's what I think is so cool because I know we do this is because now you have all your stuff in this one file. Like you can say, oh, here's the link, here's an image, here's mm -hmm. oh this and that, and it's all in this one place instead of having it all yeah. come bottled somewhere else. So yeah, that's it. it's really great for thing? like if this is a really good tip here. Okay, so yeah. And Notion's great for these types of exercises that are like very visual and very creative and like bringing content in from different places or like creative briefs and uh, like design briefs and these kind of things. It's such a wonderful app for that because you can use the like the visual layout and it feels really good for design like a designer like myself, but also like the programmery type brain with the databases. So it's kind of like a nice little bit of everything for every for like all part, types of parties. So and you can get into spreadsheets as well um, for the folks that are kind of on the, you know, the financial nerdier side of things, maybe. Yeah. Um, so this is this. So this thing that we just inserted, this is a bookmark block. And again, because it's a block, I can drag it around so I could drag it up here if I wanted to. Um, and so there's so many different types of blocks that you can play with in here, like headings. So I could type slash and like, let's put a heading in here. And maybe I say my notes um, and then maybe I drag this down here. And like I said, there's tons of keyboard shortcuts. So on my Mac, I can say command uh, alt and hit one and that will insert a heading. You can also use markdown uh, in this if you've ever used markdown before. So you can type a number sign and then hit space and that will automatically create a heading. So there's like a hundred different ways to to come at the content creation here. Um, so this might be like my notes and then I might say these are references. Um, so I can hit escape again to switch to block editing mode and backspace to delete that. Once you've got blocks selected, like so let's say I select these blocks, you can use any kind of keyboard shortcut um, to turn them into different types of blocks. So I'm gonna go, um, maybe I want this to be to do's. Uh, so I can type command alt and, and the keyboard, uh, the number four 
and that will turn those into checkboxes. And so now I can actually mark these as done. Um, so you know maybe maybe we've got we'll actually turn this into a bullet and list. Those, those shortcuts you can also do it with the slash. That's correct. Yeah. So like maybe maybe I would have something that's like uh, takeaways from this meeting. Um, what do we want to do? And again, like there's lots of different ways to create these. So if I type an uh, open bracket and then a closing bracket and then a space, it automatically turns that into a checkbox uh, block. So I might say sign up for Notion and play around with Notion. And you'll see that as I'm typing, it's actually creating those new checkboxes because it's assuming that I want to keep making a list there and I can just hit backspace to get back to my normal typing. So there's a bunch of different ways to create content, to format content in Notion. Um, and you know you can get into also the styling the things here. So I can, for example, I could click here on the six dot menu, go to color, and I could give this a background. So I could say green background. Um, and so like, you know, stylizing your page, Notion has a set of colors that are kind of set in the app and you can't really change those colors, but it, it allows you to make some like pretty looking pages. So you'll see here, if I go back to my agenda page that I've added a icon to the page, I went to covers and I use Unsplash and I just searched for green and that gives me a, a bunch of royalty free images that I can use to stylize my page and you'll see that's the image I picked. So you know, maybe I want these green Legos instead. Um, and you see here, I've got like, you know, a header with a link to the webinar, the topics we're going to talk about and so on and so forth. And there's tons of different, um, like blocks that we can use here. So let's say I'm working on this page and I want a collapsible block. I can hit, uh, command alt seven, or I can, again, I can use the plus button here and I would find the toggle list. And like, maybe I want to put in, I'm going to put in a table of contents here. And I'll hit enter to open this up and slash command again and I'll type S, uh, TOC and that gets me to the table of contents and it says show an outline of your page. Okay, cool. Let's enter one of those. So now I've got a jumpable wow. menu of topics that I can go to in the table of contents. Um, and visually, I like to separate these with um, horizontal lines. So you can type three dashes and that'll turn it into a horizontal line. And we'll do another one on the bottom here. And so that's looking pretty nice there. So yeah, so let's review our, we'll go back to our new page, our meeting notes. And, let's and so review, Michelle is asking, is there a way, a place where you can get the list of keyboard shortcuts? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so uh, let's see, I think I've actually got it up on my command here. It's under Notion help. So notion.so slash help is their docs. And under the reference stuff here, this is where you're gonna find, uh, I think, I think because my screen is so small, you don't see the search, but um, there is a keyboard guide in here. Let's see, Notion keyboard, there they are. Oh, no, they moved them. But it's in the help area somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, there they are. I'll drop this in the chat for y'all. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so this is where you get into, and these are, this is not a full uh, listing of all of the ones. These are more like the most, uh, the most uh, popular used ones. So there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more uh, that you can explore. And there's a couple, I think some of the um, the Notion ambassadors have created um, um, some really, really like popular ones. Um, so there's like, you know, for example, I can, I can make a heading by typing a number sign and then a, and then a space, but I can also make a toggle heading by typing a number sign, a space, and then typing a open, uh, chevron type thing and then a space and it turns it into a head a toggle heading which allows you to collapse the the stuff in it so, so there's some very like complex keyboard shortcuts here um and you know that because you've been doing it for so long <laughs> oh yeah 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 it's like uh you know you, we call it playing like playing golf where like what are the what's the most this the smallest number of strokes that i have to take to make right. this thing happen so yeah gotcha okay um so yeah, slash command, play around with this. Uh, like I said, there's so many different ways. You can add quotes and links to pages. 
images, videos, um, you can upload files. And then when we get down to the bottom here, these are mo the more advanced stuff that we'll get into shortly. This is where we get into the actual database views. So you can add tables, boards, which are tr your traditional Kanban boards, if you've ever used something like Trello before. Uh, gallery is for you know, displaying visual items. Um, and then we also have cal uh, calendar views, timeline views. These are our date-based things. Um, and then there's also AI blocks. Um, so while we're here, let's take a look at the AI stuff because it's kind of interesting. Uh, I have an AI enabled in this account. And so you can see it says press space for AI. So this is where I go into this thing where I can ask it to write anything. And I could say like, you know, um, tell me a little bit. Now for the AI, I'm assuming you'd need to connect your ChatGPT account or something? No, this no. is all, this is all uh, directly provided by, by Notion. So there you go. The Learning Turb is a website that offers educational content, provides resources and courses on various topics to help individuals learn and improve their skills. And it does link to the ClickFunnels opt-in that we would expect it to. Cool. Um, so that's a really basic AI uh, thing, but there's, there's a bunch of different like stuff in here that we can ask it to summarize items, find action items, translate stuff. So there you can actually in certain database contexts, like let's say you have a word or something, you can have a column that automatically translates that word to a different language. Um, I'm actually going to Japan uh, in, in November and I've been using Notion pretty extensively to practice and, and play with translating content as I'm learning, which has been really fun. Oh, nice. um, so like, let's see what happens if I type the find action items one. Um, so it, it's looking in throughout this thing uh, throughout this document and looking for kind of like actionable stuff. Uh, so it found the sign up for Notion and play with Notion. The Because they were already check boxes, it kind of formats them that way. But if I had just written it... Um, if I were like, like send Ben an email. Like yeah, would... today I need to do a, do a presentation and take take the dog for a walk. Okay. So it'll find those and turn those into checkboxes for you, and then you can, you know, mark them as done and whatnot, or you can drag them into a real database where you have all the, you know, the nice stuff uh, available to you. Um, yeah. So, and again, um, you know, like we'll get into this in a little bit, but this is like a lot of, uh, there's tons of to explore here. So I advise like if you're signing up for Notion, create a page, play around with it. That's kind of like the first thing in our in our course that we teach, Notion Mastery, the very first exercise we have people do is build a now page, which is like something that you can share publicly, um, but basically like write a bit about yourself, use the headings, use the formatting, add some add some images, like what are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you reading? And kind of like document that as a way to play with the, the page tools. Um, so like the last thing I want to focus on on this page is at mentions, which this is where if you're working with somebody else, like I could say at Marie, check this out. And Marie will get a notification in her updates panel and she can it will be directed to come to this page and uh, comment on it or whatever she wants to do. So you can mention um, you can mention people, you can mention dates. So if I wanted to inject the date, today's date, I can say today. And this is actually a object. And so if I go to the date and time zone format, right now it's relative. So tomorrow that that reference is gonna say yesterday, uh, but I can make, I can change this to the full date, which will just show October 12th, 2023. So um, this allows you to also create reminders. So you might do something like uh, uh, do thing on, and I could say next Thursday, which is October 19th. And I can then turn on a reminder and I want a reminder on the day of event. And so I'm gonna get a notification and possibly an email depending on my notification preferences uh, to remind me to come to this page and, and do some kind of action. So you can create uh, reminders and things like that. Um, yeah, so we talked a little bit about, uh, let's go back to our agenda here. So I can click over here, back we go. Talked a little bit about creating pages, at mentions, we favorited this page. So I can, again, I can add and remove that from my favorites. Um, let's talk about sharing. So the share menu is up at the top. Um, internal sharing is pretty simple. So if I wanted to share it right now, everyone at the learning tube, so like 
team spaces are also a way of, of organizing groups of people. So anyone that's part of this team space currently would have full access to this. I'm a team space owner, so I have full access, but maybe I want my team space members to only be able to comment or edit on it so I can change the permissions of uh, the entire group. Um, so this is your this is your permissions menu and Notion permissions are one of the most complex parts of the app. So I'm not going to get too much into that because we don't have enough time to do that today. But basically, you can control the what other people can do with your pages and your databases by setting the permissions. So I could I could invite somebody to come into this page and comment on it and maybe even edit it, but they don't have the full access to be able to share it with other people. Uh, if I just want it to be read only, then I can make it can view. Um, so you can see here that. Everyone at the Learning Tube can access, and only I have full access. So if I wanted to bring my partner Marie in, I could say, okay, Marie can also, uh, she can also edit this document. And so now I can see that both Marie and I have uh, full access to it. Um, and also the on the sharing side of things, when we're talking about sharing externally, we have this publish panel. So I shared this agenda um, with Lorette and Daedrian, uh, earlier just to show them like you know they were wondering what are what are we what are we actually going to see on this call so i can actually make a public link that i can copy and share with people and this is where we get into the you know if it was a public link you can allow people to make comments on it you can also allow duplicate as template and this is what you may have heard of notion templates before but you can build an entire ecosystem uh, an entire bu business ecosystem even, and share that as a template that other people can copy into their workspace and basically get their own version of that. And this is actually a valid kind of business use case. There are people making uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month selling Notion templates that are backed by support. So you know, we we make a fair bit, bit of money selling templates, but our thing is more like the training and the educational side of things, but we do sell some templates. So that there's a there's a business case here as well in that like, you know, you can build these really cool pre-built setups that Notion doesn't do out of the box for people. Um, so if you have something that like, you know, you have a very unique market proposition for your business like there may be a case here that you could you could build a notion template around a consulting business um, or even like a uh, you know like data entry and a management business so this would allow people to duplicate that as a template so that's how you can share internally uh, and again the permission system in notion is very very complex um, so don't worry too much about knowing that before you uh, before uh, you've just learned how to use notion internally we talked a little bit about comments and we went through getting notifications. So anytime I comment on something, um, at mention somebody, you know, I can at mention myself or Marie, for example, I can at mention groups. Um, so I can mention entire groups of people and they would all get a notification. Um, so yeah, so we've talked a little bit about creating pages. Um, and I think like for most of you that haven't played with Notion, the assignment I'd give you after this call is to create your Notion account and make some pages and like play around with the, the slash command and the tooling and stuff. Um, you know, the rest of the stuff we're gonna see for the rest of the call is gonna get into like maybe your like second week, second month on Notion, uh, but just be aware of, of what is available to you. Okay, so let's talk templates. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to make a new, uh, again, I'm gonna go to the plus button over here and say add a page or template to the learning tube here and we're going to start with um, you can see here that it has these suggested templates so i've got projects and tasks projects tasks and sprints docs wikis meetings i can go to more templates and we'll see how much is available to us that is like kind of pre-built for us so these are all kind of notions default ones up here <clears throat> and then there's also these different very specific stuff so if you're looking for a template in a, in a specific category like let's say uh, projects it's going to show you like some i think somebody in the chat said something about social media management so maybe you want to use the social media calendar template there's a blog editorial template calendar you've got your issues tracking company goals there's all kinds of and and notions the templates that notion creates are generally pretty simple compared to the the notion community notion community will create massive templates that have multiple things like entire business operating systems that you can purchase and kind of hit the ground and running. <clears throat> Those ones generally don't show up in this system. You just see the ones that are kind of vetted by Notion and provided by them. So I'm gonna start with one of the more complex ones, which is projects, tasks, and sprints. And I'm gonna click get template, <clears throat> excuse me. 
So you'll see here that now I've got my agenda page, I've got a meeting notes page, and now I've got these pages here, tasks, projects, sprint board, and sprints. And this is all part of the learning tube uh, team space. So anybody that has access to this now has access to these, these pages. And I'm gonna click into the task uh, page first. And if you haven't seen a database in Notion before, we're probably gonna start getting into a little bit of overwhelm now. So I've created a task database. So these are now databases. So these are, they're still pages in your Notion system, but they're, they are database pages. Um, and at, at its most basic, if I go to all tasks here, you'll see that this looks a lot like a spreadsheet. So you've got a task ID and these are automatically incremented. Here's the name of the task. We've got a status column. And these things along the top here are what are called properties. And you can think of these if you're familiar with Google Sheets as being something like, um, you know, just like a, a row across the top that, you know, tells you what is in this column. <clears throat> so you can see here, I'm currently assigned to all of these, but I could theoretically assign them to one of my partners here. I could assign them to Marie and I can mark them as, you know, started, done, archived, when is it due? These are date properties. So there's a, a bunch of different properties and I'll go ahead and add a new property to this database just to show you all of the different uh, types of data that you can add to Notion databases. So we've got um, files and media, checkboxes, phone numbers, uh, formulas and relations. Formulas are basically like a scripting language that you can you can perform operations on your data. Uh, I just finished a course called Formula Fundamentals for our students um, that gets really into the meat of how that works. It's a very complex topic. It's a little bit like programming. Um, and then we also have relations and rollups. And relations are used, and we can see here if I open up one of these pro uh, project pages, you can open this up as a page fully, and you can see now I'm in this this breadcrumb up here inside the learning tube team space, the task database, and now I'm on this page, write project proposal. And you can see here that the, the properties are now at the top of the page, and then I have a, the same page below. So this now, now I'm like in page editing mode, I can use all of my tooling like blocks and things like that. Um, and you can see here that there's an opportunity to add subtasks to this task and so on and so forth. Here's another AI tool. This is an AI summary description. So this is actually taking the content in the page and summarizing it into a uh, more filterable, findable uh, property in, in the database itself. Um, and this is where we get into uh, the relation. So you can see here that this project property is a relation to my projects database. So I can open this up. Uh, let's have a look here. So if I go over to projects, I'm just gonna open this in a new tab. So I've got this sample project performance project, and you can see on this side of things, here's the tasks that are associated with it. So I've got a task to the write the project brief and schedule the kickoff meeting assigned to me. So this is how um, in a project, I can add new tasks at this area here. So I might call this one new task, and then I can open that one up and I can start assigning it to somebody. So I'll assign it to myself. And when is it due? It's due today what's the project related to, uh, what's the priority, low, medium, high, you can tag things. Um, and the reason that we you know, add all these properties is because uh, we can now filter our content. So let's look at the um, tasks again. Here's our task by project. So you can see at the top that these are grouped by the project. So here's all my tasks for a sample performance project. And we can make changes to these in bulk by selecting down the side here and changing the properties across the top. But you'll note these little filter, these little uh, pill buttons at the top here. And this allows me to filter down what I'm looking at here by uh, a certain category. So if I wanna just see all of the stuff that's in progress, I can click status and click the in progress stuff. And it will only show me that. Uh, and this is like only my view. So if somebody else is looking at it, they still see the same thing, but you can see here this button save for everyone. You can persist the changes to your filters to everyone at your company. Um, so this allows you to really quickly show me, for example, I just want to see my stuff. I could say where the assignee contains me, and that will automatically just show me my stuff. Um, and, you know, so <clears throat> there's this idea, this is, this is a source task database, um, and we've got two views in it. So these views are, the tabs across the top are different views of the same database. So this is all tasks, and this is tasks organized by projects. 
I can add another view to my database. And let's say I wanted a Kanban style board. It automatically sorts the, the, the tasks into cards that are, are not started, in progress, and done. So as I'm working through my doing my work, I can grab this card and I can move it to in progress. And we'll also note that as you change the status here, if I change it to in progress, it automatically moves it in the board as well. So wherever you make the change, it's automatically gonna update in all the places that you're looking at. So this is, you know, I might rename this one and call that Kanban. Um, and maybe I actually wanna create a view that's like my Kanban and we're going to change this filter to be me and save for everyone. And this way, whoever, whenever somebody looks at this task database, they're only gonna see their stuff now. So whoever's looking at it is, is me in this case. So this is a nice way to create like a, you know, a, a task management system where somebody could go and see all the work being done across the whole company, but then also have these different views of the data that just show the individual employee's work. So for example, if I reassign this task to Marie, uh, it's going to remove that from my Kanban view because uh, because I'm it's not my task. So this is a way of getting like your projects, uh, project planning. Um, you can see here that Notion has built a, a project planner with dependencies and dependencies are kind of shown on a timeline with this uh, orange-ish looking arrow pointing from the thing that it's dependent, that the thing that is dependent to the next step in the process. So this allows you to lay out your kind of like, you know, work back schedule for your project on a timeline. Um, and we have to remember that all of these views are the same database source. So if I open up this sample uh, project performance and I set it to in progress and I go to the all view, we'll see that it's in progress here as well. And if I change the dates on this, let's say I make it the following week, I'll go back to that timeline and now the, the project is actually at that place in the timeline and you can drag it here as well. Like let's say I wanted to make this in November or something and you can see everything kind of updates uh, to go along with that. Um, Notion, this the sprint board is kind of a, a newer thing in Notion. Um, this is something that usually in Notion, like I could build this entire system from scratch if I wanted to by creating databases, um, but a sprint board is something that you can't build from scratch. Um, sprint is like uh, a, you know, in when we talk about like agile or, or like workflow type stuff, you know, sprints typically last about two weeks and it's like, what are we actually committing to doing in this sprint, this two week period that we're doing? Um, and Notion helps you manage that. So we've, these are the, these are the tasks that are, for example, assigned to a sprint. So this, this task, add a new task is assigned to this project, but it's also part of sprint one. Um, and so you can, you can move tasks to a sprint by using the, the sprint planning view. So you can see here's the backlog tasks with no sprint. So let's say I want to do new task in sprint one, it'll move it to that sprint. And then we go to our sprint to do our work together. And then at the end of the sprint, we can say complete sprint. And here's the prompt that it gives us. Uh, the next sprint is going to be sprint two. The start and end dates are going to be November, uh, October 23rd through November 5th, and there are four incomplete tasks. What do you want to do with those incomplete tasks? You can move it to the backlog, you could keep in the current sprint, um, or you can move to the next sprint. So when you click complete, complete sprint one, we're actually now in sprint two, and you know those tasks are have been moved, and some tasks have come forwards. And if I look at my backlog now, um, there's just this single task because it's not part of a, a sprint. Um, yeah, so there it is there. And these tasks are now in sprint two. So Notion's given us this like new component system that allows us to build a, almost like a Jira style, if you're familiar with that, or even Trello with the boards and things like that have these. And that's where you can see these sprints here. So in this case, you usually don't create your own sprints the way you would uh, if you were building this yourself. They're kind of created for you and managed by Notion. And you can see here on the timeline, uh, when are these sprints being, being worked on? Uh, so you can see like progress of your work. So yeah, let's see what else we got. Let's go back to our agenda. Okay, so yeah, so the other kind of major use cases for Notion are tracking meeting notes and wikis. So let's go ahead and add another template. And, and this time I'm gonna use this template button down at the bottom of my sidebar. So let's click templates and I would like meeting notes. 
and I'm gonna click get template. And in this case, because I'm clicking it from the bottom, it's asking me, where do I wanna add it to? So I'm gonna add it to, you can either add it to private, which would just be your stuff, but if I'm gonna add it to the learning tube team space, I can click that. Um, and you'll see here again, it's created a database with a bunch of views, different views. So we have a calendar view that shows us the meetings organized by uh, date. We have a by type, so you have a grouped into different typing. So when you want to do a new brainstorm here, I can click new and I could say my brainstorm. And we'll note that because I'm adding it underneath that category, it's automatically typed with brainstorm here. So I could have that meeting on the 12th and I could add the people that were participating in that meeting um, and those people will get a notification that they were mentioned in this property and you'll see here that we've got this thing there's all there's page templates which we we just created from but there's also database templates so notion has given us these two templates inside this database that we can use so let's say we're doing uh, let's actually say we're doing a stand up my stand up i would click the new stand up template and it applies a icon it adds a uh, and it adds a template down here. And so like, let's say you're, you know, you're doing your daily standup, I can click this button and it inserts my name and then I could write like what I'm working on here. So you can make some very, very, very advanced templates and that's what we do a lot in our work. Um, and you know, where you have like linked databases bringing in like what, what are people working on? What's in the current sprint so that you can like reference that as you're writing your, your standup and stuff. Um, so that's a little bit on how to uh, how to use templates. And those are found underneath this new button on all databases and database views. You'll see here this down arrow opens up the template. So these are the new standup and new weekly uh, template. And I can edit these templates by clicking on the dot, dot, dot menu and click edit. So here's my, here's my new weekly meeting note. So you got docs, team updates and gut checks, agenda items. So, you know, as, as you, you know, adjust notion to fit your team or your personal needs you can refine these templates or create your own templates so that you don't have to repeat yourself with like copying and pasting from or duplicating a google doc or something like that so you get these templates that you can build and work through over time okay how are we doing for time oh we're good i want to have a little bit of time for q a and kind of like specifics at the end so i'm gonna freeze through a few things here so we talked about properties and databases so again, these are your, if we look at our all tasking, these are the properties across the top here. Um, and we talked a little bit about filters. So if I click filter here, this is where I can say, um, show me everything where, for example, the status is in progress. And if I turn it into an advanced filter, which is done by clicking this little tiny little dot, dot, dot here, I can add to an advanced filter. And this allows me to do multiple things at the same time. So where I, I want to see all of things where a status is in progress and the assignee contains me. Um, and we can turn these filters into even more complex uh, rules by turning them into groups. So I could say where the assignee contains me. And then in this case, I could say, or uh, the due date is relative today this week. So this is a kind of nonsensical filter, but you can get the idea here that we can build these really complex views um, based on the rules that we want to see our data in. So the idea is that you've got a, you know, your databases that have all of your data in it, you know, thousands of tasks, and then you can make the these views and filters so that you only see the stuff that is relevant to you, it's relevant to your team, it's relevant to, based on the context, you know, when's the due date, uh, you don't want to see stuff, you know, that is not due, you know, in the immediate, that kind of thing. Um, so that's, uh, that's how you use views and sorting and filtering. I think the last major feature that I might want to talk about is the idea of linked databases. And this allows me to, for example, if I go back to my agenda here, let's go down to the bottom, we'll find linked databases. So let's, let's turn this into a toggle here. And I'm going to type slash and then CR. And that gets me to this linked view of database block. So let's click that one. And this allows us to take data from a database somewhere else in, in my system and put it into this page. And it's basically a synced copy of that database. So let's say I wanted to bring in the task list here. And it's asking me to copy an existing view. view. So I'm going to click uh, my Kanban. Um, and again, we've got this filter. I'm going to add this to a, a, it says where assignee contains me. 
and I could save this. And so this is a view that I can have in my own private workspace. And anything I, any changes I make here are going to be reflected in the company's workspace. And, um, and that means that I can add my own filters. So like, let's say I wanted to say like where the due date is and I could pick today. So my personal dashboard, I could just have the stuff that I'm like working on today that's due today. And I can mark this as done. Um, and I can even say like, I don't need to see these. So let's hide these. And this way, like if, if I come back to this page tomorrow, it'll automatically be refreshed and it'll show me any, any tasks that are due today. So I know what my work is. So there might be a place where uh, a case where you're kind of planning your week out in advance and say like, I'm going to do this task on this day and this task on this day. And then, you know, using linked databases allows us to make a really customized version of, you know, the stuff that everybody is sharing, but I could always go back to, and this, if I click here and I say show database title, we'll see that this is a linked view of the task because it's got the same icon as our task database in the left here, but you'll note this little tiny arrow pointing up and to the right, and that indicates that it's a linked version of the database. So I can click to through to that to get to the original source database. Um, and you'll note that, you know, these, these filters are part of this view. So I've got my Kanban here, um is different the, the the filters and stuff are different than the one that i put in here so you'll see that this one stays the same because this one is in sort of my control so this allows us to like move content around and show content in different contexts um you know uh it, it can be really helpful for when like for example my company we do a weekly team sync and we have a page where we review all of the projects on one page, all of the tasks on one page, like what are people working on this week? We have a check-ins database. And so you can kind of like go through all of that stuff in one place instead of having to click around and be like, okay, what projects are we working on? What tasks are we working on? You can bring it all into one location. Um, and yeah, let's do one more thing. I think we're going to look at a wiki. Wikis are pretty cool. This is a, a this is a special notion database. Um, and you'll note here, same, if I go to all pages, we'll see here's all the, the, the default pages that notion created for us. So this is kind of like, you know, your SOPs, your, uh, you know, notions doing vacation policy, mission and values, these kind of things. Um, and this allows you to verify pages. So let's say I'm a manager of this, of our policies or whatever, I could verify this for 30 days and, um, you'll see it's verified until November 11th. I'll get a notification as the owner of this document that that, doc that document needs verifying again. Um, and you'll see if I go to home, this is actually like a visual layout version of this. So here's those pages, um, get started, mission and values. So if I go into getting started, you'll see it's inside the wiki. And at the top, it's got the verification tags and all that stuff. So I could verify this one for 90 days. I could tag this with... Uh, um, getting started. Um, and so any pages that I add here, let's say down at the bottom, new pages, I click the plus button and I want to add a new page, my new page. You'll see that it's automatically got the verification system and so on. Um, I can add a new page and now it's part of that wiki. So if I go to all pages, we'll see my new page in there. So this is a, a good way of like, if you have a, if you've already got an existing page that has a bunch of pages in it and they're kind of just organized under headings like this, this allows us to go to, you can, um, you'll find it down here. Let's say, for example, I'll show, let's go back to our learning page, meeting notes. If I wanted to turn this into a wiki, I could say, go to the dot, dot, dot menu, turn it into a wiki. And I'll just click learn more. Oh, no, don't need to do that. Apparently I just say dismiss. Next, next, next. Try it out. Um, so you'll see it's it's taken my notes and it's put them into the home page. And then if I go to all pages, we'll see there's nothing in it because there wasn't any pages in that. So you can take a if I put any pages down here though, like let's say I make a new page, new page. Now that page is going to be part of the wiki and that means that those pages can be owned by somebody and verified and tagged. The tagging system is really nice because then that allows you to like sort of like tag your documents with onboarding docs 
and then you can link that somewhere else for a new employee or something and be like read all the onboarding docs please and you can just like filter just those ones out so that they can focus on that that aspect uh, of their job uh, but we don't really need to do that so we will undo the wiki confirm and now that just to wrap things up here um so because before meeting... you get off the wiki so patty was just asking is that like a website for projects website for projects um so... not really no i would use i would probably use notions projects database for for that um okay. the wiki's like dis it's it's very like it's tailored for documentation so like this will be your company policies your sops and things like oh. that it's best used for that type of stuff um and be like with with projects for example if i open one of these projects we'll see like all of these like this is a very simple project um database with only uh looks like about eight or nine properties but sometimes these project databases will end up with like 20 30 properties and because of the way that wikis are laid out um, we'll see here if I open this they're actually the properties are organized horizontally so you can imagine like if there was like a bunch of text here and stuff about the project that it would get kind of unwieldy um, but yeah I think you know notions expectation here is that this is for like you know wikis which are you know thought like when you think of wikipedia it's like categorized information about a topic you know like some instructions perhaps um, like we have a so. bunch of Google folders full of, you know, different things for different stuff. So I could have the list of all my Google folders, for example. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. This would be a great, great example of that when, you know, you're like onboarding a new employee and you're like, look at all, read all these Google docs, you know, you can, right. you can make these. Um, and because they're taggable. So we've got getting started policies, policies. Mm. This is where you get into that, like um, the linked databases again, where I could say, let's go back to our agenda. Um, if I wanted to, I could say, uh, again, I could create a linked view of a database and I can use the wiki as a database and I could say, show me the pages that are tagged with policies. And so this would be like a, an, a, a personal page for somebody where they can see the work that they're doing and also the policies that may affect them. Um, and again, I can make this like my, uh, my wiki pages and then I could also change this filter to add a filter to where the owner is me. And that way I can see like, you know, on one view, I can see all the pages that uh, are relevant to me. And then I could also switch over to my wiki and see like, let's let's assign these to somebody else. And I'm assuming you can upload docs to it, to the wiki. Yes, like if you were, so the wiki, um, like let's say our vacation policy, um, there's a PDF associated with it. Right. You can either add a property here and say files and media, and you could attach that PDF there, or you can use a files and media block. So that would be slash and then F to get to file, enter, and then you upload that document. And if it's a PDF, um, it's actually going to, uh, for example, like let's put this in here, you know, it'll show a hello.png and that's a downloadable file versus if I put in an image here and I upload this, it'll actually put the image in the page. Um, PDFs are actually have a special block. So you type slash PDF and then you would upload your PDF and it'll actually render the PDF in the page so that you can scroll through it and see it. So I would say like for stuff that you want to be browsable, you could you can embed it in the page and then stuff you want to be downloadable, you could add a files and media block. And I kind of, I sometimes for companies will do like a combination where I also include a URL property and that way there's like a canonical source of where that information is. So some people like the legal team, for example, will have their document, their contracts on DocuSign and they'll store it and they'll keep the file in DocuSign, but link to it from Notion. And that way it allows you to find where all the documents are, but maybe like the access is limited to people who have access to DocuSign, like the legal team. Um, so there's different ways to organize your information that way. And so people oh. hire you to help them set up their notion, to organize right. their business and organize what they're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, so I've been doing this for quite a while now. Like I have, for example, like I'll show you kind of like some examples of, you know, like here's like this operating system that I've built that has like, you know, teams, uh, a project roadmap, things that we're working on. 
uh, what's happening at the company. So you have like a, a recent updates, documentation, uh, calendars of meeting notes and action items and stuff like that. And so some of the stuff that, you know, we build with that is like, um, you know, uh, knowledge bases. Uh, we have like a My Home page, which shows you your work, what's due today, what's due this week. Um, I love that. Your work organized by project and so on, like what, who you're collaborating with, what's happening throughout the company. So, you know, Notion. That's like your dashboard for the day. Yeah. For the, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So lots of lots of interesting things that uh, that you can build with Notion. Um, I think I'd love to answer some questions at the end yeah. here, but I'll just do like one more kind of like use cases type thing. Um, yeah. So like, for example, my, my like I said, my partner Marie and I are going to Japan in in uh, <clears throat> in November and we can have a, a, a dashboard here where I can say like, here's the dashboard that Marie's been building. So we've got like if itinerary here with events like Explore Tokyo and then like, you know, all of our little travels thing and so on and so forth. So this is like, where we are and then our travel days so like tokyo to hakone um and in each of these we've got like this related to another database in the itinerary so for example here's the explorer tokyo page and we've got a relation to this database called activities which has like explore harajuku and so on and so forth um you know what are the details here's the here's the booking that marie bought to be able to um you know where we're staying and stuff like that so this is like another great use case where, you know, um, you can see like all this activity stuff. So like, here's all the things that we're doing and we want to do in Tokyo. So like, how much is it going to cost yen wise? And, and what's the, what's the equivalent in Canadian dollars? So this is where we get into notion formulas where I can actually wow. run a calculation wow. on the cost and translate that to Canadian dollars. So we can kind of then on a calculation basis, we can see like, about how much are we going to spend in Tokyo kind of thing. Um, so travel planning, amazing stuff, uh, content planning, lots of really interesting stuff happening there for Notion. So there's like kind of like no limitation to what you can build. Um, yeah. Wow. Love it. Okay. So let's look at, yeah, let's look at some questions. Um, yeah, absolutely. So Kat was saying, I enjoy making lists and organization stuff. So I'm going to love it. There's just so much in there. There really is. This is intense. It has a lot. And I'm assuming, and they keep adding like the AI stuff they just yeah. added. Right. So yeah, there's a, there's going to be a new AI feature coming out next month as well, which is going to blow people's minds. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, yeah. Storing and organizing photos. Like how do you store and organize digital assets? Not it, that would be a case. I think that's not the best for um, Notion. Um, like going back to our, going back to my Japan itinerary thing. You'll note that um, down here. This is, sorry, let me find the right view here. This is a. If I check out the layout settings for this view, this is a gallery view, and so you can set up. And under the layout settings, you can say the card preview is a the page cover or page content. So this allows you to build a gallery where whatever is embedded, photo is embedded first in the page will display as a gallery image. Um, but in terms of like organizing photos the way like you would do with like Apple Photos or something like that, or or Google Photos even, it's not as strong as like a photo management application. But this is a way that you know we're able to. Uh, you'll see here if I open this page up. Here's the image on the page that Marie added from uh, probably from, you know, so I could sli type slash image and I can go to unsplash and I could say Tokyo. Uh, and maybe I pick this one instead. Uh, <laughs> and we'll see here that that image updates and you can reposition it. So it's kind of like gallery view is kind of like the best bet for organizing photos. And when you, when you think about the related databases, um, for example, in my systems that I build, for our, us and for others, the projects database would have a link to the resources database. And the resources database might be photos that you've uploaded. And so basically we could have like, you know, um, you know and those, those can be tagged. For example, I've got like, you know, uh, illustration, the attachment here, that's the illustration. And this was something I generated from mid journey. Um, so you can either type, like like I said, file or image to attach the image there, or you can attach it as an attachment. And we'll note that 
um, like let's look at this see here resources so here's a gallery view of the attached the this project's attached resources and if i look at my settings here in the gallery you'll see that the card preview is set to uh attachments so anything you attach to that that uh that resource will be used as the display image so there's a bunch of different ways that you can um create a gallery view with either the page cover the page content or the attachments all right got it and then Kayleen was saying this is good for people with multiple interests, which is great because you can. You have all the different yep. things that you do. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, I would say that we have like our company um, has a probably a preponderance of folks with ADHD and other uh, neuroatypical type scenarios. And I think that for a lot of people, um, at least for my partner Marie, who is diagnosed with ADHD she's found notion to be like such a way for noticing uh things about her her life the way that she journals and the way that she tags like kind of everything and bringing and bringing those insights up to her has really helped her like kind of like do do work differently and so i think for folks that are like you know what whether you want to call it like multi potentialites or just you know just have vast interests like notions really interesting because it allows you to start connecting those things together in a in a more cohesive way and uh and i think yeah for folks that are are multi-interests it can be a real blessing and that's interesting that you say that because the person that asked kayleen actually does have a dht as well so mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go all right um so let's see somebody's asking is this could you do a social media calendar like because there's could you create that in here sure yeah um we have a um let's let's bring up our uh so we have a content dat uh database for example so uh so i can see here um what what's marie working on right now she we just finished this course from joe hudson called connection um and you can see here she's writing her notes about this and we have uh like basically you know here's our status here where we've got um it's an idea we want to write about uh it's a draft in progress we do we go through a review cycle and once it's published on the platform we do a tech check um so you can run through you know, you're, you can have a Kanban board, you can have whatever you want, uh, but we track stuff like, when was it written? When was it published? What projects is it related to? We have a post publishing action so that, you know, we look at like, oh, this is worth remixing or this is worth promoting or whatever, um, and so on and so forth. You know, we got AI summary, which people is it related to? Um, and all, of course, the URLs, the tiny URLs, uh, we have a tagging system that we use databases for. So if, if Marie was writing about, for example, chat GPT, we could tag it with that. And then the next time somebody comes back to write about chat GPT, we can say, show me all the content we've created that is related to this tag. So it allows you to kind of like over time, build this awesome repository of content that you can re go back to and reference and, and update and stuff like that. So you can see our, our database is pretty gigantic here. Um, and of course, leveraging AI here is amazing. You know, just give me a summary of this blog um, that I can copy and paste somewhere else, um, that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, calendar view would be a good place to start. And then you can do like lots of different content by status, speaking content by type. When was the content written? Like we have a pretty robust uh, content database. And this is all part of our marketing and sales dashboard here. Mm -hmm. So you can see all of the editorial calendar, our training calendar, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, the organized uh, marketing work by department and, you know, the type of projects we're doing. So it can get pretty complex. Yeah. And so when you onboard, do you onboard new people into your organization? Like you have to spend some time teaching them how to use Notion because it's such a big part of your business. Yeah, I, I'm to be frank, because our our business is Notion, like we wouldn't be probably hiring um, somebody that wasn't a Notion expert to yeah. begin with, because um, yeah. there's just like a high, you know, the expectation for that for our for our business. Um, but yeah, like there's different. I kind of the way that I've seen instruction is like there are th there's basically three levels of Notion users. There are people that are familiar with Notion and are use it utilizing it. So that would be somebody that I might share this page with and they would comment on it. They might add a couple pages here and there, um, and then you get up to the next level of training, which would be 
um, actually like understanding how linked databases work and you know kind of some of the more advanced stuff we looked at today and then after that you have the administrative level and notion has a bunch of certifications that you can study for and get certified in the essentials and also uh, settings and administration certification so like if you're really looking to to explore being a notion like provider so to speak those would be the kind of certifications that you would want to check out um, okay. and i have a bunch of resources on our website about like what to study for and stuff like that or okay. um, okay. um mark has a question can you use notion like a journal yep yeah so you would do notes and stuff like that right yep yeah so here here's my daily journal so okay. i I write, but I also do a lot of um, um, like connected stuff. So you can see here, I create an agenda reference in a in a related table every week. We use this system that we've kind of designed called theming, where every day you pick a theme, and we use rollups, which allow you to pull content from a related database page. So basically, I can say. Um, Let's see, on Thursdays, I work on product, I fast for breakfast and lunch. What is my focus? It's on Notion Mastery. What's my skincare routine on Thursdays? It's uh, I just do my <laughs> retinol thing. What what project am I focused on? Uh, what am I reading right now? What am I studying? And like, wow. and then there's a spot that I can put, like what's the most important task that I'm working on today? So I can track my workouts here. I can track what I'm reading. Uh, I can upload a photo for my gallery and stuff like that. So I have a ton of properties. Um, for example, in my journal, like if I go up to the weekly level, I have this thing called an Aura Ring, which tracks my like readiness, sleep, and activity score. And I actually have a, a little script that I wrote that runs daily, and it publishes my scores to my Notion journal system. So I can see like my readiness scores on average for the week um, here. And this is where we get into some of the fun like meaty. Uh, programming stuff like this might be hard to see here but um, this is basically like taking all of the journal entries for the week and finding the readiness score and doing a median calculation on those and returning that value and and then like formatting that with a ring that shows out of a hundred score how am I doing kind of thing um, so that is a kind of a roundabout way to answer the question like yes notion is <laughs> yes. amazing for journaling um, so you know I can say like like I can track my feeling, I'm excited. What was my rating yesterday? I have all these check boxes for things that I do. Um, I'm a volunteer firefighter. So I have like this uh, script that tells me whether I'm on duty or not based on what day of the week it is. Um, so yeah, this is Notion's kind of like the king at uh, being able wow. to do this kind of stuff. And you'll see here, this is my, this is my actual journaling template that gets created every day. So it's like, what am I grateful for? What do I want to do today? Wow. What are my 2023 objectives? I've got all these buttons for like starting the day, drink, like, did I drink water? Did I take my medications? And then like, you know, reflections at the end of the day. So check-ins and checkouts, tracking the highlights and so on and so forth. And then I've got my, you know, stuff here, like, okay, like I'm in the middle oh, yeah. of the learning journey webinar. So let's put that in progress, you know? So yeah, journaling notion amazing <laughs> definitely wow i don't know about you guys but i need to organize my life <laughs> the pens are making me look bad <laughs> all right um mark is saying will notion improve google calendar i'm finding challenges connecting it yeah so notion this is one of uh notion and i think it was early 2022 did this thing called block by block and um they essentially said that they were going to be doing a direct Google Calendar sync, um, and that never came to fruition. I think instead they acquired this company called Cron, which is a calendar application. So right now I think like, I think the idea is that eventually that Cron, the application itself, <clears throat> is going to be where they do the Google Calendar syncing, but we haven't really heard much in terms of when that will actually uh, come to to pass. Um, the way that we handle Google Calendar Sync is really clunky, but it works. Um, it's using either Make or Zapier, like a, a third-party automation tool to um, when Google, <clears throat> excuse me, when Google Calendar events are created, you create a new page in your Notion database and vice versa. When Notion pages are created in in uh, your workspace, then you publish them back to Google. But Notion doesn't have anything of the sort of like recurring calendar events that you could go out into the future and stuff like that. So, you know, 
internally we do the best we can but we pretty much just like i have my my google calendar uh just pinned in my browser and i i go i work from that instead of notion just because the syncing isn't quite there yet okay all right and just a few more we had some questions on templates somebody was saying that they bought a template off, template off etsy another one said that's a facebook group for notion templates so but how do you put the template into your account so usually when you buy a template, you're gonna get a link to a page to duplicate it. Um, so I'll show, let's let's pull this up real quick. And so these templates that are being purchased are like how you just, like a template for journaling your day, for example, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. it, could be, it could be as simple as a single page to a full fledged, like I could put all of these, all of the stuff that we created today into a, into a page and then publish that on the web and say like y'all can have this system that I built because mm. um, this stuff's kind of like out of the box stuff but you can build very complex notion systems from scratch uh, as well with like very specific intentions um, so you know if you have a very niche business that you want to build a template for you could do that and other people that might want that to pay for that would buy it but basically templating is as simple as you know, I took this page and I made it published on the web. So let me copy that link and we'll open a new tab. And we'll see here that up at the top, it says search. Uh, the reason that there's no duplicate button here is because I have to make it duplicatable. So that's the first thing that we do to make it duplicatable. So I'll say allow duplicate as template and we'll go back to that page, refresh. And you'll see at the top here is this button that says duplicate. So when you purchase a template online, you should be being redirected or given a link like this to uh, to a page that has a button at the top that says duplicate. And when you click duplicate, it's going to ask me which workspace do I want to duplicate it into. And you see I've got quite a few du uh, workspaces here. So maybe I'll duplicate it into the okie dokie workspace. And you'll see here, this is actually like if I change the name of this, um different page than this this is this is this is the original page that i've made available and in my private pages here we've got the hello version of it so now i can do whatever i want with this and i can make changes to it um and because it's in the same workspace my my linked databases continue to work now if i copied that into a different workspace these linked databases would not work anymore because it's not in the same data uh same workspace so I would suggest that if you've purchased something and they didn't give you a link that uh, you can duplicate that or you just weren't aware of that, that that was how it worked, then maybe reach out to their support team because they should be giving you access to a template. Okay. All right. And I think I've got pretty much everything. If anybody has any last minute questions, hurry and put them into the chat box. But I think that's it. Oliver says that he uses it to create to transfer marketing kits when he sells his business businesses. Oh, that's great. Okay. Well, thank you again, Ben. We are so happy that you were here sharing your knowledge. Everybody excited, loved it. I see a lot of people saying that it was a lot of information. They're going to watch the replay, which is yeah. I'm going to watch the replay as well. And then we also, you have a course and Daydrian, you have that link. If you guys are interested in learning more from Ben and his team, they do have a Notion Mastery course, and we do have a link for that. So there is a link right there. That's is that good to go, Ben? That's we can talk about your Notion Mastery course. Yeah, that's your. I'm, I'm assuming that's yeah. your affiliate link. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So he has a Notion Mastery course. Teach you a little bit more about Notion if you're interested in learning more, and it goes into you know it goes a little deeper, and you get some access to uh, learning more about that. So there's a link right there if you're interested in learning more about Notion. Thanks again, Ben. Everybody, you know this is recorded. The recording will be sent out within 24 hours. I know there's a lot of information, but I do want you to get it, play with it, test it, try it out. You're not going to break it. Um, but have some fun, use it to organize your projects, organize your life. <laughs> um, thanks again, Ben, and we appreciate you. We see a lot of people saying, thank you, Ben, it was amazing. Thank you for your time. I didn't know it could do so much. Tons of info, great info. So thanks again, and thanks again, Ben. All right, everybody, bye-bye. <laughs>